Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. If you in 2020 and your dog ain't typing your papers, you ain't living right. I get my dog to proofread my shit. I get my dog to analyze my shit. You know what I'm saying? You see him? He's saving it. He's saving it for me. He's he running it through the algorithms. That's what I do, man. My, my, my boy, man. Self-taught. You know what I'm saying? Number one K-9 English teacher. Professor Pitt. Shut the fuck up. He has a pack. Like, all kind of like... I want to take a place like Cardi B inside my car again. <laughs> the niggas know I'm late, they call me Sardi, Mr. Tardy Man. I just smoke my weed and fuck these hoes, I'm not no party man. Hit the yeah, plug if it hunts us while all together, then it's not a If it doesn't hunt... <laughs> it's floating. <laughs> it's a floater! There once was a lad who looked like me He was an innocent soul, but he loved TV His friend got him in an anime And now he's a goddamn weed Oh no, he's addicted to porn He watches hentai way into the morn One day he was having some fun Till his mom burst in, oh no His stepsis whispered Oni-chan I felt so wrong, but he was a fan She got stuck in the laundry door Oh, watch the little lad go Oh no, he's addicted to porn He watches hentai way into the morn One day he was having some fun Till his mom burst in, oh no When his stepmom walked in, she was mad She said, I'm about to tell y'all's dad Unless y'all wanna run it back And make it a party of three Oh no, he's addicted to porn He watches hentai way into the morn One day he was having some fun Till his mom burst in, oh no What did you say your name was again? Hi, uh, Mr. Morgan, my name is Carl Weezer Hi, how are you? Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm slightly less better after having to listen to you. What the hell's wrong with you, boy? Well, some people say that I'm a little softic. I have, I do have a little weight problem, and I am particularly predisposed to liking llamas. Do you like llamas, Mr. Morgan? Well, they taste pretty good the few times I've had them. Anyways... You owe me money, son. I, I get, what, wait a minute, hold it, hold, 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 hold the phone. You, no, you, no, you, I, I heard from my business partner, Harry Strauss. Now you owe me a bit of money and we gotta I, sort this out now. Well, I, what, what, how, wait a minute, I, have you ever killed a man? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. That's for you to find out soon enough, son. Now, do you have the money or not? Well, I... I don't know how much you need, Arthur. I mean, Mr. Morgan, how much money... It's gonna be a nickel, son, a nickel of your goddamn life, boy. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I... <laughs> I've got a nickel in my pocket, and I'm really glad to see you. My name is Walter Hartwell White. I live at 308 Negra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87104. This is my confession. If you're watching this tape, I'm probably dead. Murdered by my brother-in-law, Hank Schrader. Hank has been building a meth empire for over a year now and using me as his chemist. Shortly after my 50th birthday, Hank came to me with a rather shocking proposition. He asked that I use my chemistry knowledge to cook methamphetamine, which he would then sell using his connections in the drug world connections that he made through his career with the DEA. I was astounded. I, I always 
thought that Hank was a very moral man. And I was, I was thrown, confused. But I was also particularly vulnerable at the time. Something he knew and took advantage of. I was reeling from a cancer diagnosis that was poised to bankrupt my family. Hank took me on a ride along and showed me just how much money even a small meth operation could make. And I was weak. I didn't want my family to go into financial ruin, so I agreed. Every day, I think back at that moment with regret. I quickly realized that I was in way over my head and Hank had a partner, a man named Gustavo Fring, a businessman. Hank essentially sold me into servitude to this man. And when I tried to quit, Fring threatened my family. I didn't know where to turn. Eventually, Hank and Fring had a falling out. From what I can gather, Hank was always pushing for a greater share of the business to which Fring flatly refused to give him, and things escalated. Fring was able to arrange, uh, I guess, I guess you call it a hit, on my brother-in-law. And it failed, but Hank was seriously injured. And I wound up paying his medical bills, which amounted to a little over $177,000. Upon recovery, Hank was bent on revenge. Working with a man named Hector Salamanca, he plotted to kill Fring and did so. In fact, the bomb that he used was built by me. And he gave me no option in it. I have often contemplated suicide. But I'm a coward. I wanted to go to the police. But I was frightened. Hank had risen in the ranks to become the head of the Albuquerque DEA. And about that time, to keep me in line, he took my children from me. For three months, he kept them. My wife, who up until that point had no idea of my criminal activities, was horrified to learn what I had done. why Hank had taken our children. We were scared. I was in hell. I hated myself for what I had brought upon my family. Recently, I tried once again to quit to end this nightmare. And in response, he gave me this. I can't take this anymore. I live in fear every day that Hank will kill me. Or worse, hurt my family. I, all I could think to do was to make this video and hope that the world will finally see this man for what he really is.